the frame Starting has... with you, what's your name and what do you do? Jason Wright, kernel developer. Mike Thompson, forensics. I'm Holt Sorensen. I sit in between all the things and make sure they run doing ops. Brian Caswell, uh, game orchestration and scoring. Chris Eagle, chief architect. Tim Vitus, dev team lead. All right, so you've been working on this for how many years now? Three? Three years. Three years. Yeah. Three yeah. years. Yep. So is this something you do after work for an hour every day, or is it like a real job? It's a real job. Yeah, it's we're all full time. Right we're all is, it, is it a lot of work? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what exactly is the work? What, what did you have to do? You familiar with the previous grand challenges, like the urban challenge, right? right? Yeah. So DARPA yeah. ran automobile self-driving car challenges, right? Two big aspects to that. There's uh, the team that designs the course, and there's the competitors that design the car, mm -hmm. right? So in our competition, there are people that create the course. That's not us. Uh, there's three teams of what we've been calling CB authors. And they've created like more than 100 courses that the competitors are going to have to navigate. So the competitors create the cyber reasoning system. This other team creates the course. We create all of the stuff that last time DARPA got for free, like gravity, uh, physics, and like uh, the rest of the world. Right? The planet, the, the physics. Planet. Yeah, yeah. So these DARPA grand challenges are made to spark innovation and really to give birth to the future, to change the world, change the way things are. Um, so this cyber grand challenge is it's not as obvious as say creating a self-driving car. Right. So uh, as you guys came in to this challenge, you had to be consistent with DARPA's goals. You may have had your own personal goals. My personal goal was to build uh, a framework that would allow uh, continued research long after the competition ended. Could we build a framework and build a full competition uh, that would allow you to test technology and compare and contrast? Can we know, is this antivirus better than that one. Better detection and response. We need to start uh, moving away from signature-based solutions while preserving performance. Uh, well, as a society, we're uh, more and more trusting software to do things for us day to day, and that amount of trust is growing. And we really haven't seen um, a rise in the trustworthiness of the software that we rely upon. So I think CGC might be able to help automate the identification of flaws in the software that we all end up relying on. My goal on this project has been to ensure that we've got good science so that, that we have results that, so the environment the competitors see is consistent every time. These systems are being tasked to do um, some pretty incredible things with, with lots of components uh, without any humans at the keyboard. And we've seen indications from our qualifying event that, uh, that there's a high likelihood that we'll see some pretty amazing things. We got seven different teams, they're all strong. Right. Uh, each may be strong in a different uh, technical right. area. Yeah. Um, the team that wins may not be strong across the board. They happen to win, but somebody else may have been uh, excellent in a, an area that they weren't excellent in. And so the teams, whether, the, whether it's these teams or whether it's other folks that come on, academic or commercial, that can take these technologies and move forward right. uh, in a, a meaningful way yeah. uh, to provide um, benefits to the, the world at large, really. But what are the standards? Are there people that make everything publicly available immediately? And you know, what, what's the so, spread? Yeah. Regardless of their specific software that they're using to solve the, the competition, all of the data they generate so all of their patches, all of their proofs of vulnerabilities, uh, we're going to be releasing that throughout the competition um, such that everybody in attending DEF CON and more importantly, the rest of the world will be able to play along. Uh, they'll be able to apply their own tools. They'll be able to analyze what these systems did and how they did it and what improvements they could make. This is actually impacting things. They may not have done this work were it not for this grand challenge. Is that the case? You think? Okay. Yeah. I, sure. I think they would have done the work, but it would have been on a much smaller scale. So Make it's sort it of, ex yeah, and so this is accelerated the and development. It probably wouldn't have been fully automated. Um, right. A lot of the research that has happened for the last five, 10 years in this area has been piecemeal. You know, right. you build a small component over here, you build a small component over here. We've never seen um, all of this stuff integrated together, and we've never seen it at this scale. What's, what's the craziest thing that happened during this development? What's the craziest story? Craziest One of the story. problems I had to debug 
I could only reproduce when we had 10,000 processes running in the system. That was fun. We had a fairly critical problem that, that after much and much troubleshooting by lots of intelligent people, ended up to be uh, a cable that was <laughs> misconfigured in every one of our servers. Wow. If I was checking the cables, check the power. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. If this is successful, or not, it probably is going to be. Are you willing to do it again? <laughs> get the band back back together? <laughs> I think we can get the band back together. One last tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.